Hello, I'm Professor John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. In this video we are going to remove the high voltage battery junction box from the high voltage battery of our 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E GT. Now there's been a recall just recently involving the battery contactors. So I want to remove the junction box and we'll take a closer look at these contactors to understand what they are, what they do, and where they are, and uh, we'll go from there. Now since we've removed the cover to the high voltage battery, there is high voltage potential uh, right here at the junction box, full battery voltage, uh, as we'll see here in just a moment. And so because of that, uh, I'm going to be putting on my rubber lineman gloves. I wear a cotton inner liner with these gloves and then the gloves themselves. I've already pressure tested the gloves to make sure there's no holes in them. And then OSHA regulations requires a leather outer glove uh, around that rubber insulative glove. So I'm getting on my personal protective gloves here to do any work inside the battery. All right, let's go take a look at the junction box. Okay, you can see with the battery cover removed, the high voltage battery junction box. This piece right here that has these four white contactors. It has our uh, pre-charge contactor, pre-charge resistor. The two inside contactors are for the DC fast charge. The two outside contactors are for the inverter connections to the battery, the front and rear inverters. We have a high voltage negative connection from the battery right here that comes in and connects. It will connect through this contactor to a terminal here on the front, the negative terminal on the front that goes to the front inverter. And then we have a high voltage positive cable that comes in from the overall battery positive that connects through this contactor to the high voltage positive output to the front inverter and through some additional cables back to the rear inverter. Uh, we also have a pre-charge contactor and a pre-charge resistor. Uh, there is a current sensor built into this. Uh, we've got a fuse back here, 630 amp fuse for the rear motor and we have a 350 amp fuse for the front. All right, well, to show you, uh, what the contactors do. The purpose, the purpose of the contactors is to connect th these two cables, the high voltage battery positive, high voltage battery negative, through the contactors, connect them right out here to these two wires, these two terminals on this front inverter connector, and on these two terminals going to the back to the rear motor. So Let's take a, a voltage measurement of battery voltage at the moment. Uh, I have a Fluke 87 Category 3 meter here with the Category 3 meter leads with the sleeves. These meter leads, you can twist them and make it be a Category 2 lead or a Category 3 lead. We're supposed to use Category 3 uh, wherever possible. So I'm going to go two, I'm going to open up battery negative connection right here and battery positive connection that's off camera over here. But I'm just going to go from overall battery negative to overall battery positive and we get 380 volts exactly. All right, so that means we'll, we should have 380 volts right here where it plugs into the battery junction box. But now if we come out to the front two terminals going to the front electric motor inverter and reach in there and touch positive and negative, we do not have 380 volts. And if we check uh, any of these other uh, outputs, we shouldn't have 380 volts either. But that was the purpose of the FDRS scan tool disabling procedure was to actually verify that we didn't have uh, any voltage on these. But as a backup to be safe, it's always wise to check to make sure you don't have any voltage. Not making a connection there. I'm going to have to 
Move the leads to a category two to reach and reach. Here we go. No voltage there. No voltage there and no voltage there. Okay, if either of these two outside contactors, the positive contactor or the negative contactor, were to get welded shut, as in what I interpret from the recall is happening, one or both of these get welded shut or get so much arcing that they can't close. If, if they both weld shut, we would measure that 380 volts out here on this, this connection. If only one of them welded shut, then we have an open circuit and you wouldn't read any voltage out here on this connection. Uh, if they're both stuck open, then we still wouldn't read anything over here. Or if one was stuck open, we still wouldn't read anything over here in this testing uh, procedure. It would have to be in a live uh, environment where the contactors were uh, commanded on, which is what that FDRS depowering procedure does. All right, the other two contactors right here, the positive and the negative DC fast charge contactor, that those connect to this large orange two terminal connector here at the front of the battery. And that allows the DC current from a DC fast charger to come in on this terminal, on these two terminals, through these contactors, and then into the battery through the positive uh, and the negative. But we also have a pre-charge contact and a pre-charge resistor involved in that that we'll discuss a little bit later. Well, I want to remove this junction box assembly. So uh, in the Ford instructions, it tells us the uh, first step is to disconnect these two high voltage wires to the junction box assembly. That way we won't have live voltage here because right now we have live voltage on these two wires going to the contactors. So there's just a tab that will pinch and lift up, lift the connector up out of the way. I'm just gonna tuck it off to the side there. That's the positive. This one is the negative. Squeeze in on these tabs. Pull this one off also. And we'll just let it sit off to the side here. All right, the next step is to unplug a lot of little uh, wire harnesses here. So we've got a clip right here. Pull up on another connector to remove. Another connector right here in the middle to remove. And we'll unplug that. Uh, there's another connector right here. Have to pull up on a connector position assurance clip. Push in on the tab and lift up. Um, we've got another clip right here. Another one right here. Another one right here. Another one right here. All right, have we got them? We have them all unplugged. Got the ones in the front unplugged. We still have this one over here to unplug. It has a little connector position assurance clip that you slide out and then to press a tab to pull it out, but I can't really see the tab from this angle, so I'll come back to that. All right, the next two wires to disconnect are the two wires that go to the rear electrical connector for the rear motor and inverter. These use a number 40 Torx right here. There's no high voltage on these since we've unplugged the wires, but I'm using insulated tools. I do not have any insulated Torx bits though. Okay, get that screw out of there. And then we'll lift off electrical terminals for the rear inverter. There's one right there. And the other one, these have little locking tabs that hold them in place something to lift up with here. All right, and here is our other terminal, the negative terminal. No, this is the positive. Positive and negative terminals going to the rear inverter. All right, then we have some bus bars in the front here that connect to the DC fast charge that we need to unbolt. So there are four 
studs with nuts. Good locking nuts. There we go. Got one of them. Another one right here. And then we can lift off that bus bar. go. So here is the bus bar that we just disconnected for the DC fast charge. So that would have been the negative bus bar. Now we have to do the positive side. It's got two more nuts and a bus bar. And the other bus bar. Here's the other bus bar right here. Looks like nickel coated copper. All right, we've got everything disconnected, except for this clip. Now we have everything disconnected from the junction box, except for the, or this one uh, electrical connector over here that I can't break loose. So now we will come in and take out the eight bolts that hold the junction box to the bottom of the high voltage battery. Let's see, those are eight millimeter. And the last one. Okay, I'm ready to lift out the junction box. This big piece right here. Get all this other stuff out of the way. Slowly lift it out. unit. Um, all right, now let me see if I can get this last electrical connector disconnected. There we go. Wow, that was a fighter. Okay, this whole big piece right here is the battery junction box with our five contactors overall battery negative and positive dc fast charge po negative and dc fast charge positive pre-charge contactor pre-charge resistor and then we have rear motor fuse right here and front motor fuse right here and then the two smaller fuses one of them is for DC to DC converter, this one right here. And this other one, I believe is for the air conditioning system. But I will take some time and explore this. I want to actually activate the contactors since they're controlled with the 12 volt system and take some measurements uh, with a milli -ohm meter and, and uh, a few other things. So I'll follow up with that here in a little bit. Okay, as you can see here, this is the junction block that I removed from our 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E GT. It's been several days since I removed it, and I've spent a lot of time reading and researching to make sure that I understand what's going on here in this, in this junction block assembly. I discovered I told you a few things incorrectly, and I also discovered a few new things that I didn't know. As I partially disassembled this junction block, I removed a cover that goes under the junction block. There's a bunch of circuitry under here for the controls uh, of the contactors. And this cover goes here. We will take a look in more detail at the circuits underneath a little bit later. It also has an upper cover that sits on here 
that I've removed to see some of the internal pieces and trace the current uh, through the circuit. Uh, but in the process of doing that, I discovered that there are at least three different versions of the battery junction block. There's one for the rear wheel drive only, there's one for the standard all wheel drive, and there's one for the performance all wheel drive, the GT version that we have. This is the performance one. And one of the big differences between those two, and there are several differences, but one of the big differences between the standard all-wheel drive and the regular all-wheel drive are the fuse, fuse sizes used for the front axle. So this big fuse right here in the back, this fuse is for the rear drive unit. Ford calls it the electronic rear axle drive, the ERAD. Uh, all of the rear axles in the Mustang variations are the same rear axle, and I suspect they're all protected by the 630 amp fuse that is there. Uh, as you can see in this photograph, the, on the standard all-wheel drive version, it has the same 630 amp fuse. However, on the front axle, the electronic front axle drive, or the EFAD as Ford calls it, the performance version has a 350 amp fuse, where you can see in this photograph, the standard all-wheel drive version has a 150 amp fuse, and I suspect, but I have not found a photograph of it yet, of the rear-wheel drive only version won't have a fuse at all since it doesn't have a front axle drive unit. Okay, so there are, I believe, three different versions of this, and it's more than just these fuses. The physical layout of things is different in each version. One of the things I told you incorrectly while I was removing this is that there were only five contactors in this junction block. I was wrong. There are six contactors. We have our overall battery positive, overall battery negative, the main contactors. We have our DC fast charge or DC level two fast charge positive and DC level two fast charge negative right here. And then I incorrectly told you that this was the pre-charge contactor. It is not. This is an auxiliary contactor, and we'll talk about what it does a little bit later. This little tiny yellow contactor is the pre-charge contactor, and it's in series with the pre-charge resistor that has a value of 24 ohms, and it's rated at 30 watts. Okay, some of you may be wondering, what is a contactor? What does it do? How does it work? In basic terms, think of a contactor as connecting two circuits together when it's turned on and it disconnects them when it's turned off. Just two wires. Connects them together, disconnects them. So the main positive contactor that we have right here connects our high voltage battery positive cable. I've removed this from the battery. This is going to come in and plug in right here on this input terminal on one side of our contactor. And then when that contactor turns on, it will connect our battery positive to the positive side of everything high voltage on the vehicle that needs to have high voltage power uh, connected to it. On the negative side, the negative contactor, it connects our overall battery negative cable here that plugs in back there, it connects battery negative to everything on the vehicle that is high voltage. So we have a positive contactor to connect battery positive, high voltage battery positive. We have a negative contactor to connect high voltage battery negative to everything high voltage on the vehicle. Everything high voltage on the vehicle needs a positive and a negative circuit to function. To show you a contactor in action, a functioning contactor. Let's take our, our main positive contactor right here, and I'm going to tip the housing on its side here. If we look at these two studs right here sticking out, this bottom stud is what connects to high voltage battery positive. This other stud over here is what connects to everything high voltage on the vehicle that needs high voltage DC. These two are not connected together right now. If I take an ohm meter, and I'm going to turn on the continuity beeper, 
and if I touch both meter leads together, the meter emits a, a tone. So right now, I'm going to connect our meter, one meter lead, to the high voltage battery positive input and our other meter lead to the high voltage battery positive output. Notice our meter is reading OL, overload, which means it's an open circuit. There's, there's no connection there. Now, to turn on these contactors, there are some little tiny 12 volt circuits, low voltage circuits. There's two wires right here. There's a red wire and a black wire, and they come all the way over here to a little green circuit board that we can, you'll see on the top of the junction block. But we've got the red wire right here, the black wire right here. The red wire has power on it that is connected through that green low voltage service disconnect connection under the hood. And so I've brought in a 12 volt power circuit right here and I'm just going to put it under that electrical terminal. I've now connected 12 volts to the power side of the control circuit of our contactor. Now to turn on the contactor all I have to do is come in with a 12 volt ground. And this is what the battery energy control module does. If we want to turn on the contactor, we give it 12 volt power, we give it 12 volt ground. Listen for the click. These contactors can be quite noisy. Here we go. You hear that click. All right, now let's take the, our continuity tester here, our meter. And now as I turn on the contactor and it clicks, we are going to expect our continuity tester portion of the meter to emit the beep. I'll do it one, one more time. So notice as long as the contactor is energized with the 12 volt circuit, we have a connection. And that's exactly what happens when we turn the car on. We close some of these contactors. They make a connection that provides battery positive, high voltage battery positive to the high voltage components off the positive contactor. And on the negative contactor, we provide high voltage battery negative. So we have a, we simply just have a contactor for the positive side and the negative side of the high voltage circuits. All these little tiny wires that go through here are the control circuits for turning all six of these contactors on and off. One of the things that I learned that surprised me as I was doing my research on this uh, junction block is this orange electrical connector right here. This orange connector and orange uh, indicating that it, they are high voltage circuits has one, two, three, four, five high voltage circuits connected to it. And if you trace each of these wires, each wire goes to each of the five larger contactors that are here in this junction block. So this gray wire right here connects to our positive main contactor. And what it does is it connects to the same, pos or the same output stud as the one that we were just measuring. And think of this as a voltmeter, a, a voltage measurement that's fed back through this orange connector back to the battery energy control module. And it is a verification that the contactor has closed or opened as commanded by the battery energy control module. So when I just activated this contactor and it clicked, the high voltage that was connected here on this stud would be connected to this stud, but it would also be connected to this gray feedback line. So the battery energy control module commands on the contactor. It's going to expect a voltage on that line to indicate that the contactor closed. When it turns off the contactor, it's going to expect for that voltage to drop to zero. But if we had a contactor that was welded shut, it would not drop to zero. It would stay at a higher uh, voltage. These sense lines 
connect at each of the con contactors. So we've got the gray one right here. We've got a red wire right here. We've got a white wire right there. We've got a yellow wire right there and the green wire right here. So those are all five of those circuits. That was a surprise to me, but I guess it makes sense because if we think back to the uh, high voltage disconnect or depowering procedure uh, from my second video, these green bar graphs that we looked at of voltages, I suspect are red right off of these voltage sense lines. The voltage sense lines are downstream of the contactors, which means they're on the output side of the contactors. Now, while we are here under the junction block, uh, there are two connections right here that bolts go through and connect right to the, the battery housing, the, which is connected to 12 volt ground. So 12 volt ground has nothing to do with battery negative on, on a electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle, high voltage battery negative. The high voltage battery negative is totally isolated from our 12 volt uh, ground. Um, but these two circuits here are connected right to 12 volt ground and they have one, two, three, four capacitors uh, connected to them. And when I measured those capacitors, they were all around 95 nanofarads um, for a connection to vehicle chassis. As far as why they are there, uh, I don't know. If any of you know, uh, put it in the comments. Uh, by the way, the Ford Explorer Hybrid that we have, the 2020 Ford Explorer Hybrid, has the same sense lines uh, in its contactor assembly or junction block assembly uh, for its battery. Okay, let's take a look at the power flow through the contactors now. As I mentioned before, we have high voltage battery positive that connects here, high voltage battery negative that connects here, and the negative and positive contactors, when they turn on, they provide high voltage uh, connections to the rest of the vehicle's high voltage system. Well, one of those pieces of the high voltage system is the front electric motor, the, the electronic front axle drive. And there is a terminal right here for the negative connection to the front axle and another terminal right over here for the positive connection. So when the positive and negative contactors turn on, uh, they will connect high voltage battery power to our output connector here that goes to the front inverter. And then in the back of the, the junction block, as you can see right here is a threaded fitting, right here is another threaded fitting. These are the two orange high voltage cables that go out the back of the battery, right down the center of these battery modules here, and out the back through this connection that you can see to the rear axle drive motor. So the two outside contactors just simply open or close and provide power to those two electric motors and, and inverters. However, you just can't connect battery negative and positive to an inverter without running it through a pre-charged resistor. Uh, otherwise, the current will be too high and it could cause damage. And so we have a pre-charged contactor and a pre-charged resistor. So let me get this cable out of the way and I'll bring in an inverter. So this is the actual inverter that goes to the rear drive unit on the performance version here and all the versions since they're the same on the rear of our Mustang Mach-E. This two wire electrical connector right here is the connection where high voltage battery positive and negative from our contactors would connect to the inverter. And then an inverter's job is to use DC, pa DC power and convert it to AC three-phase power on these three terminals here to drive a three-phase uh, electric motor. But what I wanted to show you in relation to the pre-charge contactor is what's inside of the inverter. Inside the inverter, we have this big capacitor right here. And I don't know what size it is. I haven't measured it yet. But a capacitor stores electrical energy 
when you turn off the car, there's a resistance wired in parallel with this that drains it down. It's called a passive discharge. It drains the voltage down and brings it down to zero volts eventually. This capacitor gets charged up to the full battery voltage close to 400 volts on a fully charged battery. There's a resistor that discharges this every time you turn the car off, and it can take a few minutes to fully discharge it down to zero volts. Now a capacitor in a DC circuit, like our battery circuit here, when you connect a capacitor to overall battery positive and overall battery negative, this capacitor acts like a short circuit, which means it's just like connecting high voltage battery positive two high voltage battery negative with no resistance in between and there would be a tremendous amount of current. It's called an inrush current and it can be thousands of amps and that high inrush current can cause damage to electrical terminals and connectors, uh, parts of the inverter itself. And so to prevent that inrush of current while charging this capacitor, we use the pre-charge resistor. So let me get this out of the way. The pre-charge resistor, as you can see right here, is rated at 24 ohms at 30 watts. And if we had a 400 volt battery, let me get my calculator going here. If we charged to 400 volts and we divided that by 24 ohms of resistance, we would only have 16.7 amps of current in the circuit rather than thousands of amps as we charge the capacitor. The capacitor will still charge very quickly in the inverter uh, and once the capacitor is fully charged it becomes an open circuit and no more current will exist in that circuit. But while it's charging, initially it can be thousands of amps and then it goes all the way to an open circuit with no current. Um, so we have to use a pre-charge resistor with a pre-charge contactor to put the resistor in the circuit uh, as we turn on the vehicle and charge the capacitor in the rear drive unit. But this also has a front drive unit. So we're doing two capacitors at once, which would give us a tremendous amount of current in the circuit as it was uh, charging up. So the pre-charge contactor does the same thing as the battery positive contactor. It's on the positive side of the circuit. It's just going to run current into these capacitors through this 24 ohm resistor rather than through zero ohms like you would have in this uh, contactor. So the sequence of events is something like this. We would turn on the negative contactor to apply battery negative to the capacitor, but it's still an open circuit with no current. Then we will turn on the pre-charge contactor, which is on the positive side of the circuit, it'll run battery uh, positive current through our 24 ohm resistor to the capacitor in the inverters and charge them up. Once they are charged, we keep the pre-charge contactor turned on while we also turn on the positive contactor. So at this point, we have the negative contactor the pre-charge contactor and the positive contactor all on at once. Now once the two outside contactors are turned on and the capacitor is charged, then we can turn off the pre-charge contactor because the capacitor is already charged. So it's a sequence of events there and you have to do them in the correct order so that we don't have that inrush of current. So that is the purpose of any pre-charge contactor and resistor is to prevent that inrush of current. Now that has to happen any time you're going to put power to those capacitors, front or rear or, or both, um, every single time. Even during DC fast charging, the pre-charge contactor and resistor are used. Over here on the battery positive side, we have a current sensor. And this is an inductive current sensor It just has a, a little hole through the middle of it. It's kind of like a clamp style inductive current sensor. And it goes around our high voltage battery positive terminal right here. It just slides right on. There's just a couple little clips that hold it in place. This has that electrical connector that gave me 
uh, some trouble disconnecting it while it was still in the uh, in the battery housing. All right, now let's take a look at the electrical connectors to the rest of the components uh, on the vehicle. We've already shown you the high voltage positive and negative output to the front inverter and the high voltage positive and negative output to the rear inverter for this car. But we have other high voltage components that need a connection. So over here on the negative side of the junction block assembly, negative comes all the way over to the about the midpoint right here. Um, we have a 50 amp fuse right over here. And that comes over this little circuit that I've pulled out of the upper cover. This terminal and this terminal connect to another wire harness that I have back here. And it's this connection right here. And one of those wires feeds power to the cabin heater and the air conditioning compressor, the electric air conditioning compressor. The other wire feeds power to the DC to DC converter and the onboard charger module that Ford calls the secondary onboard diagnostic module A. So there's a separate fuse for each of those circuits. Now there were four components I mentioned there, but there each or there are two components fed off of each fuse. So one more time, this fuse right here, this 50 amp fuse feeds the DC to DC converter and the onboard charger module. This fuse over here feeds the cabin coolant heater and the air conditioning compressor. Now on this fuse here for the DC to DC converter and the onboard charger module, it has the auxiliary contactor in series with it. And the auxiliary contactor connects all the way back over to our battery negative terminal. So it has the ability to bypass our negative contactor and just provide the negative uh, high voltage uh, circuit needed to the DC to DC converter and the onboard charger module without the need to turn on the, the negative contactor. That has the advantage of we don't need to power up or pre-charge the uh, capacitors in the front and rear uh, electric motors. Now that's just the negative side of things. We still need the positive contactor to turn on to provide the positive side. So on this wire harness here, these two cables right here come and plug in to provide the negative power for those components. And then there are two other uh, connectors that come and plug right here that feed the power, the positive side power to those components. So the air conditioning compressor, the cabin heater, the DC to DC converter, and the onboard charger module, they all need to have a connection to the positive side, which is done through this, these two circuits, and the negative side of the battery, which is done through these two other circuits uh, over here. On this wire harness, we also have the main connector, the low voltage connector, uh, that carries uh, the CAN communication lines, uh, power, 12 volt power and ground. Uh, it has the coolant temperature sensor inputs, the coolant pump controls, uh, our low voltage service disconnect uh, circuit is in there, and a wake up uh, signal for the battery energy control module. Uh, it also has here, uh, oh, by the way, that's the same electrical connector that's used uh, in Ford automatic transmissions. They just use the same connector. These two circuits, these two small circuits right here, these two wire circuits are called interlock circuits. And they connect to the high voltage connectors uh, and watch to see if somebody unplugged the connector in the wrong sequence. If you unplug the connector in the wrong sequence, these two little interlock circuit wires will show an open circuit which the battery energy control module will monitor and command open the contactors. All right, so that's one of the harnesses that plugs onto here. We've got our front motor connector harness. We have our rear motor connector harness. And those are the, the main uh, output harnesses for this uh, junction block. I forgot to show you, we've got this green circuit board 
right here uh, with a, an electrical connector right here. That connector is where the power from our low voltage service disconnect uh, is connected and then all the ground circuits to activate all six of these contactors is done through the um, battery energy control module. Now back to this auxiliary contactor here for a moment. I believe the this contactor allows our DC to DC converter to be turned on and off without having to power up the front and rear uh, capacitors in the in the drive units. And it, I think it does that for battery maintenance, 12 volt battery maintenance, because the DC to DC converter is what keeps the 12 volt battery charged. Uh, I could be wrong on that. It also connects to the onboard charger module, where when you plug in your charge cord uh, from the wall at a 120 volts or 240 volts, whatever it may be, uh, it has to step the voltage up high enough to charge the battery and run that current in through this little tiny 50 amp fuse here. And it would go through, that current would go through this uh, auxiliary contactor. So the contactor is there to be able to open and close that circuit. Once again, I believe it's for 12 volt charging, but it could also be for just your AC level one and AC level two charging uh, and the DC to DC converter at the same time. These two large contactors here are for DC fast charging. Some people call that level three, but there's no such thing as level three. Although people will argue with me all day about that. It's actually called DC level two charging. And that's from the Society of Automotive Engineers standard J1772. This contactor is the DC fast charge positive connection to our high voltage battery. This contactor is our DC fast charge negative connection to our high voltage battery. Uh, but it has to do it through the two outside uh, contactors. So what I have right here is the DC fast charge electrical connector off the front of our high voltage battery. It has some big bus bars on there to carry a lot of current. Uh, I believe this Mustang on the window sticker said it supports 150 kilowatt charging. So 150 kilowatt charging allows for a pretty high rate of current. 150,000 watts divided by the 400 volts, it would give us 375 amps. But the Electrify America charging stations aren't capable of outputting 375 amps. I believe they're only rated at 350 amps maximum. So anyway, that's a large amount of current. We need these big heavy bus bars to handle that amount of current. So we have a DC positive input, a DC negative input right there. And these two bus bars are going to connect to these two studs right here. So they're going to come in and sit right there. There were two nuts that you would bolt down. The cleanliness of these connections has to be just perfectly clean. You can't have dirty hands and put this on there. You can't just lightly torque the nut and you can't over torque it either. The torque on all of these bolts and screws and nuts for high current uh, circuits is extremely critical. I mean it's critical anyway but it's extremely critical on these high current connections because the slightest amount of resistance at high current turns into a large voltage drop and a lot of heat generation. So we have our DC power from the external DC fast charger uh, that's applied to these two terminals here. We have up to 400 or so volts applied on these two uh, terminals and several hundred amps of current depending on the charge station, your battery state of charge, temperature, and a whole bunch of other uh, things that can affect that. This is an input to charge the battery. So we have to turn on the positive and negative contactors. But since turning those on uh, doesn't actually connect to the outside terminals, we have to turn on the main positive and main negative contactors also, which means we have to get the pre-charge contactor and pre-charge resistor involved. So I suspect that to activate DC fast charge, we have to first turn on the negative main contactor 
then the pre-charge contactor, then the positive contactor, and then turn on the negative and positive DC fast charge contactors. So during DC fast charging, all four of these big white contactors are used during just regular driving, just the two outside contactors are used. All right, well, I've had a fun time exploring the insides of our battery junction block here. Learned a few things like the high voltage sensing lines that monitor this, the status of each contactor, of whether or not it's opening and closing when it should. Uh, learned a few things about different fuses and power circuits and uh, I hope it's been inter interesting for you also. Uh, I, I love to explore stuff like this. So now I'm ready to put this back together and put it back in the, in the battery because I have to have this vehicle functioning uh, for next week's class. But before putting that back in the battery, uh, in my next video, I'm going to show you how to remove the battery modules from the battery housing itself. Well, to wrap this video up, we've, we've seen how to remove the high voltage junction block and the internal pieces here. The only things that are serviceable in this entire junction block are these four fuses, the two 50 amp fuses and the, the two large fuses. And if you ever have to replace one of those, you better figure out why they blew before you replace them. All right, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.